Hey everybody, how you doing today? We're going to take a look at a pretty complex uh, situation here and changes in the long run aggregate supply curve in both the neoclassical and Keynesian view. And the key thing to remember here is the long run aggregate supply is based on the quantity and the quality of the factors of production. And so what we're going to look at is what happens if these shift, right? What happens if all of a sudden one of the factors of the fa one of the factors of production improve in either the quality or the quantity and the long run aggregate supply curve actually shifts outward. And this would be analogous, actually, if you think back to the production possibilities curve and an increase in the capacity, the production possibilities at a particular country. And with the two different schools of thought, neoclassical and Keynesian views in economics, this has an impact on what actually happens in the marketplace. So check out this video and I hope you find it helpful. In this video, we'll look at what happens when we shift outward the aggregate supply curve. In the neoclassical sense, that would be the long-run aggregate supply curve. And in the Keynesian perspective, that would be the, the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. So what's really important here is to remember that a country's long-range aggregate supply is based on the quality and the quantity of its factors of production. And if these change, then the full employment level of output also changes. So as economic growth occurs, the long-running aggregate supply curve shifts outward. So, and if you remember, this represents an increase in the potential output of the country. So a country seeking to increase the rate of economic growth and the full employment level of real output will use supply-side policies to increase the quantity or improve the quality of its factors of production. So remember, we're on the supply side here. And the impact depends on the way in which you view economics. For Keynesian economists, the impact on the, in the, on the, on the long-range aggregate supply curve, or the impact really on the equilibrium point of output and price level, is dependent dependent on where the aggregate demand curve is. So look at this example here. Here's the aggregate demand curve. Here is LRAS, or aggregate, long run aggregate supply curve, or the aggregate supply curve. I think Blink misnames this. The aggregate supply curve one is here. And because of an improvement in the quality or the quantity of the factors of production, look at the, the aggregate supply curve, the total potential output for the economy increases due to any of those shift factors that we talked about on for, for supply, like an increase in, in the education level or an increase in land labor capital, an improvement in some way. So what's interesting here is that even though the long-range aggregate supply curve or the aggregate supply curve moves out, the, the real output or the potential output of an economy moves out, and from the Keynesian perspective, look, it has no impact on aggregate demand. And therefore, it has no, well, it has no impact on the overall real output. Still, if aggregate demand does not shift, the country will still be producing at Y and at a price level of P, even though the potential for the economy has moved out from YF1 to YF2. So the key here is if the economy is operating below the full employment level, as you see here, then the increase in the long-run supply curve, aggregate supply curve, will have no effect on the equilibrium point. The economy is an initially in the equilibrium of Y, of full employment, and an increase in long-run aggregate supply increases the potential of the economy to produce a higher level of output, but the aggregate demand is not sufficient to buy up, and that's the really Keynesian phrasing, to buy up its potential. So the equilibrium remain at Y. So while Keynesian economists certainly do not underestimate the importance of supply-side policies in achieving economic growth, they do believe that, they emphasize their view that the government must intervene in the economy if the economy is operating below full employment. So what they say is, look, if this is here, and they're operating below full employment, and, and the long-run curve, the overall potential increases, then it has no effect. But if... Aggregate demand, let's say we're operating before the shift, we're operating out here. So make this AD1. Before the improvement in the, in the 
in the quantity or the quality of the factors of production, if this were the price level and this were the national output or the real output, if the economy were already working in this area, well, then the shift outward would have an impact, actually, on the output of an economy. And it would have an impact, impact on price level. Because if the aggregate demand curve is out here, and then there are shifts in the aggregate supply curve because of an improvement of the quantity or quality of factors of production, then the price levels will go from P1, right, down to P2. And obviously, the overall production in the economy will move out here. It won't move all the way out to YF2, but it gets pretty close to YF, no, not Y2, right? So it depends, in the Keynesian perspective, exactly where the aggregate demand curve is before the shift of the aggregate supply curve. So that's the Keynesian perspective. And what, what I, I'm coming back to a same theme over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, and that's this. Keynesian depends on the aggregate demand curve. Even if you shift out longer on aggregate supply curve, and the aggregate demand is in here, it has no effect on the actual real output of the country. But if the demand curve is out here, because of the way in which this curve is structured, then an increase in the long run aggregate supply curve and an outward improvement in the factors of production, then you will see that it will have an impact not only on price, but also on the quantity that's produced. So that's the Keynesian view. Now, from the neoclassical view, an increase in the long run aggregate supply will have an entirely favorable impact on the output of a country. There will be an increase in the full employment level. Look at an increase in the full employment level and a fall in price from P1 to P2. So this is why economists are sometimes referred to, neoclassical um, supply side, neoclassical economists are referred to as supply side economists. Because according to this view, supply side policies are the most effective way of achieving a country's macroeconomic goals. So if there's the same increase in the, so if this is the aggregate demand, the same aggregate demand curve that we saw in the Keynesian model, and long run aggregate supply is, is pushed out because of an improvement in the quantity or the quality of factors of production, it has a very different effect on, on the economy. Because here it's operating at P1. Let me draw this better, right? Originally, it's, it's operating here. And then after the change, it's going to move out here. So these price, both the price level and the real output shift or change as a result of the structure of the long-run aggregate supply curve in the neoclassical sense and the aggregate demand curve. So here you can see how the government, from the neoclassical view, does not need to get involved at all because simply shifting the long-run aggregate supply curve outward because of a quantity and a quality of the factors of production will have the benefit of decreasing price and increasing output, a very much a favorable outcome for an economy. But from the Keynesian model, you can see that this wouldn't be true. And that is the big difference that I want you to see when it comes to the shift factors for both the Keynes from the, both the Keynesian perspective and the neoclassical perspective. Okay, so I hope you found this video to be helpful and a look at the changes in the long run aggregate supply curve in both the neoclassical and Keynesian view. All right, talk to you in a bit.